one of the favorite devices that I have on my home network is a network attached storage device or what can also be called a home media server. It allows me to place all my files, my music, my videos, movies, recordings in one central location and have convenient access to all that from anywhere on my home network. It also provides a web interface that can be used to access all remotely. Yes, it's kind of slow. You definitely do not want to use the web interface to watch a video or a movie, but you can access files on your network and even add files to it from remote locations from across the internet. This is a great convenience feature and allows you to have access to all your most important documents from just about anywhere in the world. It also provides security which prevents unauthorized access to those same files. Okay, so the way it's set up on my network right now is it's set up as a DATP reservation, meaning that it has an IP address which will never change. So let's go down to LAN setup and have a quick look at it. Down here in the address reservation section, we have 192.168.1.133, which is my HP Media Vault. This is the media server that we're going to access from across the internet. The first step is to create a DHCP reservation or set the device itself up with a static IP. The device itself came with a setup routine and a default IP address that I was able to use to access the web interface and through the web interface tell the device to pick up a DHCP address. That web interface also provided me with the device's MAC address. I took that MAC address, created this DHCP reservation, decided on what IP address I wanted to give it, rebooted the HP Media Vault server, and it came up with the proper IP address. So now I can access that media server on my network by using this address. This is the same interface that we'll be using from across the internet. It allows me to enter an admin password and configure it. It allows me a place where I can share photos with my friends and allows me a place where I can go to access my files and folders. Now this is not a wireless device. This device is actually plugged in to my wireless router with an ethernet cable. It can then be accessed wirelessly from any device that connects to my router wirelessly. So we have our media vault configured to work on our network. Next thing we want to do is we want to set up a port forwarding rule to allow access to it through the internet. So how do we do that? Well we just start looking for keywords such as port, port forwarding, etc, etc. And here we go. Port forwarding, port triggering. And this particular interface gives us the option of setting up either port forwarding or port triggering. Port triggering is kind of a more secure version of port forwarding. However, it's not really reliable. What port triggering does it allows us to choose a specific port that will be used as the trigger. Whenever the router detects traffic on that port it will then automatically open a port or a range of ports that we specify then later when that traffic stops it'll shut the port back down this keeps us from having to worry about having that port open to the world at all times the problem with port triggering is a lot of applications simply do not work very well with it so what we're going to do is we're going to stick with port forwarding And here's where we set it up. Now, after all this discussion and theory about the subject, you're going to be amazed at how simple it is to set up. We can use a service that's already been created, or we can add a custom service. And this comes in handy with games, where you really don't have a well-known service name. 
So you can just give it your own name, such as Xbox, and then the game, and then the name of the game, Rule One, and then Rule Two, Rule Three, etc., etc., etc. In our case, since we're using port 80, and that's already a well-known port, all we have to do is just choose HTTP, which is port 80, and then simply specify the IP address of the device that we want to forward all that traffic to. And we already know that that is 133. Simply click Add. That's it. We're done. So now, how does somebody access this IP address from across the internet? What they need to do is simply type in our external IP address and we can give that to them by simply going to a site such as what's my IP and telling them. Then, from across the internet, they just simply type in our IP address and they can may or may not need to use a colon followed by an 80 but since we're using a web browser the web browser pretty much knows to look for port 80 anyway so using that IP address from the cross the internet they should be able to pull up our website from that point it's a matter of knowing the correct password to use to access our files